Hi, my name is Greg, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use matrices to solve systems of linear equations. One name for the method that we're going to use is row reduction, which is the reason for the alternate title that you see here, row reduction in 60 minutes. We are going to break this into a series of five videos and it's going to be time well spent because at the end you're really going to understand exactly what to do at every stage of the process with no confusion because we're going to break everything down and go through each step in detail. Before we move on I just want to mention that if you would like to work through these slides at your own pace you can download them as a PDF file from the website listed here, which is www.HireMathHelp.com. And again, this is just the first video of five, it's just an introduction, so we're going to start from the very beginning. In particular, we want to know that you have the right background knowledge. The only thing that you really need is to be able to solve systems of equations that look like this. Just two variables. So the reason is that while the method that we're going to learn it will help you to solve, it will allow you to solve systems of equations with just two variables, it's a bit more complicated than the way you would do it in an introductory high school algebra class for example. And it is more complicated, but the advantage is that the same method will allow you to solve systems of equations like this with three variables, x, y, and z, and also equations, systems, rather, with four variables, or five, or any number of variables. Theoretically, you could use this method to solve a system with 100 variables, or a thousand. Of course, you probably wouldn't want to do that by hand because it would take a really long time, but you could do it. Alright, and in case you're working through a book, uh, I just want to clarify a quick point of terminology. There are two methods uh, for solving systems of linear equations that both use matrices. A matrix, by the way, is just a table of numbers like the one you see here. And the first of these methods is called Gaussian elimination here. And the second is Gauss-Jordan elimination. These are named after, uh, well, famous mathematicians, famous depending on who you talk to, Gauss and Jordan. And the second method Gauss-Jordan elimination, it builds off of the first. So that's the one that we're going to focus on. If you can do that, then you can do the other method as well. So you should be in good shape no matter what method your book emphasizes, it, assuming you're using a book. If not, well, that's okay. We're going to cover all the details here. Here's the overview of the three main stages of row reduction. First of all, you take your system of equations, which we have here, and you convert it into a matrix here. At this point, the reason for doing this is pretty simple. It's just the matrix is a shorthand notation. When we have to do a lot of steps, it's just nice to not have to write down x and y and z and plus and equals a million different times. So instead, we just represent the system of equations with a matrix. And the way we do it is we just take all the numbers, so 3, 6, 12, 9, and we just put them in into a matrix, 3, 6, 12, Nine. It's as simple as that. There are two things that you should be aware of though. The first thing is that what do you, you need to know what to do if you have a missing variable. 
So what I mean by that is in this third equation here, there's no x, but you have to represent it by something in the matrix. And so we represent that missing, that missing x by a zero here. And that should make sense because what we're really saying is that if I put a zero x in this equation, well, it's the same equation, basically, because zero times any number x is just zero. And so we're just adding zero to y plus 4z, but that doesn't change it. So it's really, it's basically the same equation um, if we have a zero here. All right, the second thing real quickly is that you need to make sure the variables are in order. If you're working out of a textbook, then most of the problems you see probably will already give you the variables in order. Uh, but here, let me show you what I mean. So in this first equation, we have x, and then y, and then z. And it's the same in the second equation, x, y, and z. And in the third, the missing x, y, and then z. And that's nice, because then if I pick any number in the matrix, so let's say, oh, I don't know, this 4 here, I know that because it's in the third column, it goes with a z. If the variables weren't in order, so like, let's say the second equation, it was given to me in a different order. So say the 4y is first, and then the 2x, and then the minus 4z. Well, if I just put those numbers directly into the matrix, then just from looking at the matrix, I'm not going to know if the, which numbers go with which variables. So we don't want that. So make sure they're all in order before you put them into a matrix. That's the second thing. Okay. Uh, once we have the system represented by an augmented matrix, the next step, step two, is to start changing the matrix. We're going to add some numbers to it, multiply by some numbers, do a bunch of stuff to it using certain operations. We can't do whatever we want. So soon we're going to see which things we're allowed to do to the matrix to change it. And the goal is to get it into what's called a reduced form. You may have seen reduced fractions before. So like, for example, 3 sixths, uh, if you reduce that, you get 1 half. Right, so 1 half is what we call a reduced fraction. A reduced matrix is a completely different thing. And we're going to have one video just devoted to explaining what that means. But the idea is, once you get it into this special reduced form, we're going to get, we're going to be able to convert it back to a system of equations. So we'll get a new system of equations. And that new system of equations is going to be much easier, like tremendously easier to solve uh, than the original system. And its solution is going to be the same as the solution to the original system. So just to summarize, first step, convert to a matrix. Second, you get the matrix into reduced form. And then the third step, you convert back to a system of equations, which will be much easier to solve. And then your answer will actually be this, the answer to the original system. OK, now, if you've never seen a matrix before in your life, uh, let's just talk about the very basics. You don't need to know very much about them, but the first thing you need to know, well, is how to say uh, matrix and matrices. It's nice to be able to use language, especially if your teacher starts using a bunch of words. Um, if, you, if you're working with an instructor, you want to understand what they're saying. So matrix this is just if you have one of these tables of numbers and then the the plural form if you have a bunch of them it's called matrices that's the plural it's a little bit 
It's a little bit strange uh, the way the plural is formed, which is why it might be a good thing to point out. A lot of people um, will say things that aren't quite right when they first learn this word. But that's the plural. Okay, uh, it's matrices. The next thing that you want to know is the difference between rows and columns. That's important because I will be using these words a lot and you need to know the distinction. So the difference is that rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. Let's just get a visual on that in case you like to learn visually, uh, which I do. Um, so here we have a row that's side to side and here we have a column that's up and down. Okay, and then one other question you might be asking yourself is what's the deal with this line here? Well, it doesn't actually serve any mathematical purpose. Uh, it's really just a reminder. It's really just a reminder to you that the matrix represents a system of equations and the line is showing you where the equal sign would go. If you don't want to write it, then you don't have to. It's not going to affect your computations. Okay, that's the end of this first video. In the next, we're going to talk about what the row operations are. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.